My name is Ellen Roberts and my position is Harold and Ann Berkeley Smith Curator of American Art and this is my exhibition Modern Spontaneity Ralph Norton's Watercolor Collection. So it's about our founder and his great collection of watercolors. I've just done a book on him. The one thing that I found in doing the research for it was that he was a great collector of watercolor. You can really then see this developing, the kind of trajectory of his collecting and how he gets more and more avant-garde. He appreciated watercolor. He had a special appreciation for the medium. Also, it's, it was uh, less expensive than oil painting, so I think often it was a kind of a conservative way to move into a new artist because it was a less expensive investment. Because watercolors are so light sensitive, we have been showing them on a kind of rotating basis. We never show them all at once. So this is really a unique opportunity to appreciate that because they can only be up for three months and then we have to put them away for five years. So see them now or otherwise you have to come back later. The different colors fade at different rates, so uh, reds do tend to be very fugitive. I would not say that I'm going to be more careful with this one than the other ones because we just need to be careful with all of them. But it's great that we have such great vivid color left in this one and it just shows what great shape it's in. We don't often mix American and European art here, but it's exciting to do so, I think, because these are all modern artists. In the early 20th century, many American and European artists knew each other and they were going back and forth across the ocean, so that kind of division between American and European is kind of artificial. I like that title because I think that modern artists were attracted to watercolor uh, for several reasons, but one reason was because it seemed very spontaneous. You can often see the artist's brush stroke on the paper, but that being said, it's in fact very hard to manipulate watercolor. You can't erase it, you can't cover it up because it is transparent. So in fact, you have to be a real master of it. And it's in fact not that spontaneous because of that. So it's kind of a, a paradox, I guess, of the of medium in that sense. They also liked watercolor modern artists because it does call attention to the artist's hand. And that's something they were very interested in doing, kind of calling attention to the fact that the work is a work of art and not a window on the world. So this is George Gross's Eaten and To Be Eaten, it's called. It's fascinating to me that Ralph Norton bought this. He bought this in 1939, and it is, that's very early for him to buy something that's this kind of surrealist, where there's really no realistic sense of space here. And in fact, one thing that Ralph Norton would often do is that when he bought a work, he would then write to the artist, just asking for more information about the work. So he did write to, to George Gross about this work. And George Gross said, I find it very unusual that you would have bought this because it has a kind of pessimistic sense to it, and that's very unusual for an American collector of this time, and it really is unusual. So this is kind of the most, one of the most out there things that Ralph Norton bought.